All right, the three of you together were three bitches on in another life of friends. You were I, girls. Not, sorry, I just gotta stop you right there. Right, okay. <laughs> what the fuck did you just say to me? long enough it feels like a fucking new season dude true hey are we are we going yeah hey going, welcome bro. to applause of the number one podcast in the world it does feel like season two you know why why because we've taken like a week off yeah because we we backlogged a bunch of podcasts because we thought we were going to russia and now like it was excuse me for rusty mike and i are definitely hung over and working on what like probably two hours no of sleep. sleep that's that when you guys long. are at your best though you uh, think so we thought that and then we i i don't know if that's true my stomach's mm. hurting today I got a some sort of uh, have you egg. tried farting? Was it gas? Uh, maybe? I have tried farting. It didn't work. It was. It, was, it worked. I oh. ate a bacon egg and cheese on a large uh, but you baguette did. this morning. But with you did two too. Orders of hash browns. You did too. Yeah, but you ate the individually packeted ketchup. By the way, what the fuck? What the fuck, dude? Yeah, yeah. I'm picking up these little single-use ketchup plastic ba bags, and yeah, I'm like, very well, inefficient. What's the point of these things? <laughs> the they take me 12 minutes to pour out, and then not to mention there's just Contributing towards negative waste in the environment. The funniest thing yep. too is he he finishes going through like 15 of these packets. He's got this little dumb pile and literally right next to him, right next to him within reaching room is a full massive ketchup bottle. And you just, just had to- It's just one of those things. No, no, no. It's a- Oh, a bottle. Yeah, I, I just didn't wow. check my surroundings. So I was just not, I was I was just focused on getting the ketchup out of the plastic thing. But listen, so what'd you learn? What'd you learn from that experience, huh? Uh, uh, stop using single use plastic. There you go. You learned about a plate- Hey, go. I, I did some Screw other dumb, we did some dumb things. Yeah, he learned about night. a place called Twin Peaks too. In, so, in San Antonio, Twin Peaks, <laughs> yep. it's like it's like Hooters. Yeah, yeah. And I realized when I pulled in, Twin Peaks is like boobs. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I like to, I like, to, uh, damn, I don't want to piss off any Twin Peaks girls, but I like to think that it's like the, the Hooters B squad. Really? But I, I don't I know if it that's, was, I, the one I've been to in the past was definitely, I would say it was a higher tier. A step up from Yeah, Hooters? it felt classier. For I, sure. I would, I would should, say so By the too. way, yeah. should we? Should nah, we? probably not. But like, basically what? I did some dumb things. <laughs> in we started drinking, bro. And once I get the, just the perfect amount of alcohol in me, um, I start sending DMs, uh, which is by the way, the worst time to send DMs. And like, you do that I, when you're sober too, though. No, so no, 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 no. But oh, are you saying like, the the plethora I, of DMs I was, was like, just I, vast. I, I go I go for like the A listers, bro. Uh, big, big and, and I say the dumbest, dumbest shit. shit. Yesterday I sent the following two different girls. One I just said, "Oh shit." That's it. Dude. Yeah, that's bad. To one, I'm and sorry, then and then another awful. one. This one's great. Another one I said. Uh, did you retract that and send something else? No, I did. I don't unsend, bro. Anymore. I said this. I said, "Mom, is that you?" What? Well, like what? What, what the fuck? Bro? I mean, it's yeah, it's still that's, better than the time you told uh, what's her name Madison to fucking <laughs> yeah, just, eat shit or whatever you right. said. To, what was it again? Like, I'd rather die. I'd rather die than date her. Like I, the hottest girl in the literally yeah. in the fucking world, bro. Yeah, makes me nervous, bro. Because as as teammates, it's like, are we gonna toss up an alley oop that you're just gonna swat? Absolutely, yeah. dude. Actually, I'm, I'm horrible that's, that's, at that's, anything that's, involving that's, like coercing with girls. We we went to this to this bar at like like 1:45 a.m. and he had. We took like a, one, a couple of the, I don't know how to fucking say this. We're hanging out with a couple of the Twin Peaks girls afterwards. And uh, I wasn't like it, vibing with any of them, but I found this like, what was she, like 45 year old, like heavily <laughs> tattooed woman? She had a giant koi fish on her leg. And I kept like touching it. And she's like, she's like, you want to go get a Michelob Ultra at the bar? And I was like, I'm going to be honest with you, lady. I'm probably going to go to sleep. I got Vincent Van Gogh on the podcast tomorrow. I'm not trying to. <laughs> I'm not trying to fucking do anything stupid. Why so, were you touching the koi though, bro? Bro, because I, I was like, I'm going to do this, dude. He, he, asked and then, me, he asked me, he goes, should I do it? I'm like, this is going to be a sick story for the podcast. And I went, oh, and I go tell, tell him how I got out of the situation. He goes, M hey, same classic Mike. He goes, yeah, mom, is that you? Sprints out of the bar. Gone, dude. He's a 34 Peace. year old man just sprinting Peace, across bro. the He area. actually did that. That's Gone, not, dude. Back to the hotel. Ditched me, bro. Ditched him. Because it's an easy out. It's an easy out. I got a phone call from my also, mom. Also, bro, on the, on the flight there, I was I was looking at like, dude, flight attendants are hot. Oh hell yeah, flight attendants are hot. Hell yeah. Why have I so not taken percentage. this opportunity to pursue a flight attendant? Because uh, maybe because they're like flying. Oh well, fuck you, Spencer, bro. You always come with like logic and shit. I'm I think you should though. continue on pursuing uh, Alex from Call Her Daddy. Oh oh She's yeah, so hot. We we uh, but we that's went his sister. That could be it, my it, we, They feel like a sister <laughs> podcast at this point. We we went live with them yesterday um, I on that, her. They, I love them. Yeah, like, you they're do. incredible. I think, dude. You, man, I think you should pursue her, bro. You you love her. I do love her. We've been talking about doing like a partnered pod 
podcast. Hey, can I tell you about a dream I had before we get the guest on? Yeah. This is like way off topic, bro, but I've been thinking about it for a while. Like we do this podcast and it's great and everything and like the vlogs and it's my passion. I love creating and making content. But um, <clears throat> sometimes I just want to get away, dude. I want to just uh, absorb my Ohio roots and go and move away to a cabin, mm. you know, like like Wolverine did in the one X Men yeah. movie. Oh, He's yeah. just chopping fucking wood. And they came for him. Though. And, well, I have a dream that that one day, like I'll move away forty years down the line. Like someone will come and like some young looking dude in a suit, glasses, take off his glasses, and be like, Logan Paul, YouTube creator, we need you. And I'll just be like, Yes, sir. What, what what's but, this yeah. mi- what's the mission? You'll just enter back into society yeah, but, like, at that point. But what's the what's the use like what's the mission? You're a sixty four year old controversial YouTuber at this point. I don't like know, what's but, fucking Well what's that's fucking why I don't want to do it because like I know they'll just leave me there, bro. I'd just be chopping wood for the rest <laughs> yeah. of my no one will come for me. Anyways. It's very um, noble of you though. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Is it I, sometimes noble to what, imagine that someone's going to come call upon you for a major <laughs> need? I, it's in no way, shape, or form noble, actually. I, I, just, well, I just maybe like a simple life is something I desire. That's noble. You've talked about that. I, look, something we did something we did before we just started talking about bullshit for the last five minutes. Um, our guest today came in the house and we did like a little pre-walk around session with him. So see, he, he could feel the energy. There's going to be a lot of energy, spiritual type conversations happening today. And um, so we have a ghost in our house. So we have a ghost in our house. Not only that, he specifically told us exactly what type of person this ghost is. And he said it was a, a cavalry member. Of some sort, yeah. A soldier. With a strange, like, costume. A strange outfit. costume. Yeah. And, and you'll see this footage on the, on the vlog, but we all freaked out, obviously, because um, of Pete. If you saw the vlog where we went to Big Sur, we found a cavalry soldier who we named Pete in a random log in the middle of the woods. And, and quite possibly, he could be haunting our house. So... Mm-hmm. Along, along with that, and also good? figuring out um, Kong situation, because apparently he was able to feel some of Kong's energy and and why he died. Um, this is going to essentially deep. protecting us. This is going to be a very, a very deep podcast, um, guys. Let's introduce him. Our special guest today is here to unlock and release your passion and purpose, and provide the key that makes everything you attempt work. He's an author, a psychic medium, spiritual teacher, and public speaker. It's Vincent Jenna. Ooh, I like oh. that. Yo, excuse it. We're rusty, dude. And I feel it. Yeah. I feel it. Yeah. But I'm glad you're here because you're you're just on, dude. You look great. You feel great. Oh, listen to this. I love this stuff, man. This is the reason why I love yeah. doing these yep. shows, yeah. man. Exactly. That's just great. Hey, it takes one to know one. You know what I mean? Hey, it's I a reflection that. of you. Oh, thank you. It's you, you All guys right. here. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. It's great to be here. That's a great shirt, by the way. Oh, I man, I'm blending in with your friggin' background uh, it's, over it's here. I'm ahead. You know, just the color, dude. It's everything about it. You like it? it. It's, it's, a, it's a great fun. shirt. And blue, you're, you know, it's so funny that you have blue here, and the colors of even your logo have all to do with who you are and really? your personality Whoa. and your soul. Absolutely. Blue is one of the higher spiritual colors, just as you know. Okay. Okay. And all of you, you don't even know this, but you've got this spiritual core that is reaching people and it's going to get even <clears throat> bigger and bigger and bigger, especially after I'm done talking with you today. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. Well, that's what you do, Vincent. You yeah. came you came in my house today came, and you, yeah. you blew all of our minds about 30 minutes ago. Can you explain in layman's terms or to like maybe a skeptic, what is it, what it is that you do and what makes you so great at it? Okay, a psychic medium, first of all, that's two parts, a psychic. A psychic is able to tap into your past, present, and future. So it's a linear information. All of us, everything that we've ever done in our lives is harbored in a dimension, the information, a library of knowledge. Carl Jung used to call it the collective unconscious mind or the mind of God. Mm. Um, Today, some of the metaphysicians call it the Akashic Records. Well, whoever Mm. you are, all that info is there. Well, a psychic taps into that, so I kind of get the book out on Logan Paul, and I can read everything about it. Um, as a medium, now I use another part of my channel and my ability to tap into a dimension where we all go after we're done being in the physical realm. Um, now, ghosts, which is really interesting, they're neither here nor there. There are many dimensions in our world, like we are living in the third dimension. You may have heard that we're approaching the fifth dimension and trying to, besides that being 
a singing group back in my days. I just uh, gave away my age. Oh, you know uh, okay, I mean? okay. Um, you look, you look young. You look what? 20, 24? I was going to say uh, third, late, early. You know, 30s. you got to keep doing those drugs, man, because it's working. Okay, <laughs> man. <laughs> shit. No, no, I, I, I love that. I love that. Now. <laughs> no, so I just actually turned 64 years old and I'm very Whoa, proud of you. Oh, shit. Wow. Hey, man. You know, right, you look right, great, right? Yeah, dude. Great going, skin. Going. I love it. Everything. <laughs> Do you use essential f- fish oils? I, do, I use everything. Let me tell you something. It's all about product. I go into Ulta, which is a cosmetic place, <laughs> yeah. and they know me personally. I've really? got a discount card. Do you yeah. use pH balanced water? Uh, no. Do, oh, do you wear makeup? Do you wear makeup? Uh, no, not unless I have to. No, I got some tan right now, so I don't need the makeup. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not out in public. What okay. do you think I am? Man? I I'm a psychic know. medium, not a freak. You gotta uh, stay low key. No. <laughs> so, 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 you gotta so, stay low key. So anyway, key. your ghost didn't get a chance to cross over. It's stuck between the earthly dimensions. Like when we die and we lose our bodies, we go into, I don't know, maybe dimension seven, eight, nine. You know that tunnel of light people are, that have had yeah. near-death experiences talk about? Well, that's kind of like a subway. And it's a subway that gets you from this dimension into that dimension, you what, know, and it bypasses the other stuff. What happens in like the seventh and eighth dimension? Like, is it is it just like a superior, like, do all of my DMs get answered? Like, it, what, what happens there? Like, is it just a 100% hit rate? Well, well, let me tell you something about that. It, <laughs> it's really the further dimensions that we get over there. We're not striving to evolve to the fifth and the sixth dimension. There's a lot of misnomers out there and misunderstandings about life. It's you're in this dimension, which is the physical dimension. When you incarnate here, this is where you're choosing to be. We want to evolve and we want to grow, man. We want to be in touch with that side, but we're here to have this physical experience, a limited experience, so that we're not using all our powers. We're not always tapping into the force like Star Wars says, you know? Um, It's when we get to the other side that we'll evaluate ourselves. Our goal is to get to the highest level we possibly can be, right? We're all divine. We got to get there, okay? Talking about heaven? No, no, even here. We're divine. We're part of source, God, spirit, whatever you want to call it. That's who we are. We're these beings. And we're getting to learn that by being here in this existence. I mean, just in your daily existence, you get to know more of who you are, right? And your own power. Um, which is what we really need to talk about is you guys coming into your power, especially you. Okay. Uh, you don't know your power yet. Okay. You have no idea. Oh, friggin' power. And will you do me a favor? You made me the coolest grandfather in the world. Oh, just oh to really? Let you know. Oh, amazing. I have a 12 year old grandson and a nine year old grandson who think you are God. Whoa. And absolutely. They freaked out when they found out that I was here. You, really? It won't make a difference if I shout out their names. Will you shout yeah, yeah. out- Yeah, what are their names? Noah and Caleb. Noah and Caleb. Hey, shout out guys. Little Gang for Life. All right. I love I you. freaking cool love guys, you. okay? <laughs> what other grandfather gets that, okay? No, but you- you are impacting, and that's the reason why you like shock therapy. Oh. You love shock therapy, not your own. You know, you might need it sometimes, you know, with the, yeah. the probes. What, what do you mean, what do you mean no, shock therapy? You love shocking people. You oh, love shocking people with I what do. you say because you know what it does? Do. It gets you noticed. It gets you seen. It gets you remembered. And that's very important for you. Okay. You want to go there? Yeah. You yeah. Really? Are yeah, you able to up. handle it? Are you friggin' ready to handle it? Probably not. But Are let's you? do it. No, especially <clears throat> when I tell you about the past lives the three of you have had. Pa- oh. Past lives? Past lives. Wow. I bet Spencer was a plant. Absolutely. A what? A plant? Oh, was I a plant? No, man, no, no, you can't no. be anything inanimate. I can tell you that okay. right now. Oh, well, plants but are living. You want me to? That's, but it's an inanimate object. Okay, here okay, I see. Earth, okay, uh, it's, yes, of course it's living, but it's not. It doesn't have a soul. And I, was, it I, have a I just sidetracked everything. I know. Yeah, you <laughs> no, really. Go, you're, go, <laughs> just really, you're a coconut uh, palm tree. Okay, okay, that's okay. You know palm that. tree. That's All right. right, the three of you together were three bitches on in another life of friends. You I, girls. I'm not, sorry, I just got to stop you right there. <laughs> right, okay. What the fuck did you just say to me, Vincent? <laughs> you come into our our fucking domain and you call us bitches in the first you ten are, minutes. You were you were the funniest girls together. You would. What do you think of Hell when you think? Yeah. Yeah. Bitches. Were we mean the girls? Were we mean girls? No, 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 oh, no. Hold on. You were funny. Were we mean girls or the golden girls? Not the golden girls. 
Golden Girls. You were mean girls wow. back in, like, um, we're talking about back in the Middle East. Um, oh. You were jealous of some of the other uh, girls around. Really? And so, yeah, you were just, you were always playing tricks on people. And it was that kind of thing, mm. almost like, but you wanted to do it as a male this lifetime. You're pulling in. You wanted the relationship, but you wanted to do it different. And you wanted to do it as a male. But you are still very insightful. You were the most insightful one back then. So too. I, I made sure... <laughs> The, the the pack of bitches was doing good things. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, Absol good. Absolutely. At That's good. You were the one that That's didn't want to always do what they were doing. Yeah. You know, when you see that. And if you can liken what, what, it. What, what were they always wanting to do <laughs> as, as women? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they wanted to tease the hell out of men. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. that's not that bad. They no, that seems about right. They wanted to tease the hell out of men, and, the, and kind of they do that now with women, yeah. right? With yeah. some girls there, yeah, right? Yeah. You do. And the other one, the lifetime for you that stands out the most in this one, do you like pirates? Because you were a pirate. I was? Yes. Amazing. You were a pirate. Oh. <laughs> that, hold Wait, on. What, that, was he a pirate hooker? Was no. he a pirate hooker? No, okay. this no, lifetime this time was not when he knew you. He was a pirate. Ask, really? ask him the only accent he knows how to do. How, what accent do you it's know how to do? It's the oh. only accent. He, he, when he wants to be his dad, he wow. says, my dad came up to me when I was young and he said, Loki, you're going to get down the stairs or I'll make you walk the plank. I'm like, dude, your dad wasn't a pirate. Bro. Like, I don't know how else to fucking tell he you. He was. Maybe he, you were. Man, I'm telling was, you right now. Whoa. You were a pirate and oh, and you are. That's the reason why you're rebellious now. You want to be your own person. Um, He's just. Is that the reason why he goes after so much booty too? Oh, oh totally. Spencer, you he really, likes all types yeah. of booty. That was low-hanging fruit, dude. You <laughs> really, no, oh, nobody went for it, though. <laughs> I, this is Johnny shit. Depp. I you wow. were the Johnny Depp of the Pirates of the wow, Caribbean. Okay? That's awesome. Um, yep. and that's what it was. But yeah, no, but um, we absolutely now, we can go into some deep stuff as to okay. what this is all about for you. Okay. Okay. So I was talking about you not knowing your power, okay? And you came into the world a completely different child. You were a pain in the ass right to start with. I mean, you were definitely more, is, is dad over here? Yeah, that's my dad. Over here? <laughs> Papa Paul. Okay. Was he, it was definitely not an easy child to handle when he was young. He pushed the limit. Okay, there you, you push go. The limits. Pushed it. Pushed the limit. Um, because that's who you were meant to be to start with. You will always push the limit and you will always make people think. Um, so, but what happened is the the nurturing aspect. Um, it, you didn't, you needed so much. You were a sensitive kid. You're a sensitive guy now, extremely sensitive. There is an aspect of you that is so powerful that you have not had a chance to feel, and that's your heart. You did feel it recently, and you did feel it with your pets. That's mm. the purpose of them was to let you know who you really are and the love aspect mm. to who you really are. You love deeply, and you're a big, tough guy, and you want to be a big, tough man because you're hiding the sensitivity that you that you have. <sighs> you don't want to show that as much, but you can't help but friggin' show that. You came me. in fair. You're exposed to me. I know. Well, that, you so said All you this is me. so true, too. Okay. It's so true. Well, that's the point. I'm not pussy. No, it has nothing to do with being that. It well, I mean, I think he's because you called that. him a bitch earlier. So no, just, that was your past life. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. And a bitch is not a pussy. Okay. That's completely different. Facts. Sensitive Facts. is meaningful. All right. So here you are. You're growing up. You're not getting to experience your own self love, which you've yet to experience. You have not experienced unconditional love until you got conked. The purpose of Kong was to reflect to you not who Kong was, who you were. And I'm going to tell you something about Kong and all pets right now. If you want to know who you are, you look at your own pet. Because they absorb, they're part of this planet. They do not have souls, unlike what a lot of people want to think. They don't need to incarnate. A soul is what the spirit created of us. All right? Our bodies are just here to experience our soul in a different way. Okay. So animals don't have that, and they absorb and reflect right back. Kong was a lover, but just like I said earlier, Kong was a beast because he was pretending to be that way because he wanted to see himself that way. Everybody wants to see themselves big, right? You want to see yourself big. And your defense mechanism is very strong. That's what I was feeling. And when you were younger, okay, different type of parenting, definitely a different type of parenting. And and so it wasn't necessarily the touchy-feely, oh, oh, honey, you're so sweet and you're so wonderful and good. And each parent has different um, uh, methods of raising their kids, right? And so, but you, 
you actually need to know what your heart is capable of. And um, one of the things that I thought of with you right away is I, I need you to watch the movie, The Wizard of Oz. Okay. 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 The Wizard of Oz is a metaphor and a metaphysical movie. It has nothing to do with it being a sweet story and entertaining the kids. It was also for the adults because every single character in The Wizard of Oz represents a side of us and how we feel. Mm. Why it's so important to you is because there is the scarecrow in you who never thought he had a brain. You don't think you're intelligent. That's an inside thing inside. You do not feel that you are smart. So, but you have an incredible brain. What did the what did the scarecrow find out at the end, right? Now, the important part is what did the tin man say to Dorothy at the end of the movie when she was leaving? Do you remember? <clears throat> Something about the movie not syncing up with the dark side of the moon by Pink Floyd. There you go. That's is that that's it right. It, that's <laughs> that is it exactly. <laughs> Besides does it, does it that, that? <laughs> he turned around and he said to Dorothy, "Now I know I have a heart because I feel it breaking." Oh, oh shit! And that's the reason why Kong died, is so that you can feel your heartbreak. Oh. In order to feel your heartbreak, you know how much compassion and love you have and you're capable of. That's what you have to know about yourself because that's what you got to use. You don't even have unconditional love in a lover. And, and, and you, you play around with that and you act cool and you act tough and you act, but that's not who you are. You're the sensitive, loving guy. You reach all of these people and yeah, you're shocked. It's the shock therapy for everybody. They think it's cool. The kids think you're cool. But do you know the effect that you can have over all of these people? I listened to your dream that you expressed before. Do you know what that dream is saying about you? You are petrified as to who you are, but you want to affect the world. You want to make a difference. Mm. You want to be called upon to save something, to save someone, but it scares the shit out of you Mm. to think you've got that ability and power. So you play with it. You play with it like a kid, like a kid who has toys, but you're, that's who you really are. You're this powerful being, but you are not necessarily nurtured into completely believing that about yourself. So you're finding your own way and you're finding it this way. But within the next five years, this entire situation is changing for you. It's going to be expanding from a podcast to you doing more tours. You are actually needing to be out there in the public. You've got an attractive package for a reason and it's not for you. And by the way, stop standing in the mirror loving yourself naked, okay? I know. Oh, 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 oh. Nah, he's just wow. sitting on that joke for a minute. That, I don't do that. that. I don't do oh, that. Right. Important point, Uh-oh. because people have been asking me a lot lately, why is Logan always naked? And why is he always taking pictures of himself and looking at himself? Is that how he really is? And of course, as a friend, I have to defend him and say, absolutely, that's how he is. Yeah, right, it's exactly. Just always right. Wait, wait, what's good, yo? Mirror, I, I, like, a clothes just kind of a burden, and like, fucking dude, I'm just taking pictures, dude. Sometimes you gotta check out my out. body. Come on, guys. Absolutely, you love, why wouldn't you love the way you look? Yo, Damn, if I look yeah, you that way, it, I'd be real happy. Damn. You gotta wear it, bro. Right, exactly, and or you not love it. But I don't got, even got abs yet. But he also True. loves the way not he after those tater tots. Okay, True. this is that, you know True. what I mean? Yep. Yep. Hey, you're onto something. Hung like a horse. I know. <laughs> you're onto something. Hung like a horse. <laughs> huh? What? Tours already been in the works. Yeah. Tour, tour, tours in the works, dude. You're on, you're on, you're on, you're on point with that. <laughs> All right. I know that. But you, but that package isn't for you. The package is for the world. Oh, okay, because okay, okay, unless okay. you stand in front of the mirror all day long, like that, sometimes I do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's understandable, man. Yeah, right, of course, you've got to, you know, but mine's from insecurity, not because I look that good. <laughs> all right, it's for the world because you know what? They can trust you. Your eyes, your look, your gentleness, you're not hardcore. You don't look like this New Yorker who's going to bash the hell out of them. You don't look like Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, by the but, way. But I want, I want you to notice your friends and people on here. You've got... This gentle dude right over here, yeah. who's spiritual, he's more on the emotional side, the nurturing side, the intuitive side. Then you've got tough Mike over here, all right, who's on the cool <laughs> side, the more athletic side. You probably- <laughs> Why? I'm, I'm gonna stop you right there. Maybe at one point in my life. Yeah, right? not at as one much point now. in your life, but not, not now, it doesn't matter. Oh, yes. But she that's the combo the of who you are. Yeah. That's a combo of who you yeah, are. Yeah, yes. That's a part of you. But you just have to learn how not to be afraid to be more on this and the nurturing end because yes. of all the people you can freaking reach. Mm, yeah. um, uh, okay, there's a woman who is stepping into the picture right now, a spirit, um, who wants to talk with you. Um, is your 
Is your mom deceased? Yes. Yes, she is. Your grandmother is here. Oh, okay. Nah, nah, no way Arlene's here. Eileen. Eileen is my Ar wife's name. Arlene. 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 Oh, well, Arlene is my friend's um, mother's name. name. Wow. Okay. So we've got Arlene or Eileen. It doesn't matter. But grandma is around and um, um, she's laughing right now. And she's also saying big sorries, big sorries out there because life was tough when your parents were growing up and when dad was growing up and, and grandma is like been watching over you. Um, do you remember grandma real well? Nah. No. Yeah, I remember you, stories. It's stories remember, about her. Remember what they, yeah. But she wants you to know that she knows everything about you right now. Fuck, and that makes me so nervous, bro. Like I swear to God, when I masturbate, bro, I'm like, are my ancestors watching me from heaven? <laughs> Your <laughs> ancestors. Like who doesn't think about everybody's that? Like, watching that's, that's except crazy. them. Yo, Wait, even, is, she, is she subscribed? Probably not because she's like. Uh, no, she's got, no, she, she, oh, she, she's laughing. She, she says, I've got better taste. Now, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> she's not my demo. She's not my demo. Okay. <laughs> That's true. She's That's not my true. demo. That's she's true. laughing at you right now. That's Did true. she use a spoon on you at some time? <laughs> my grandma actually used a spoon on everybody growing up. There you go. On a regular basis. On a regular basis. Okay, so she's so, a But did your mom? No, my mom. My mom used a spoon on me. Yes, yeah, your, your mom used a spoon on you. Okay. Well, grandma is apologizing for the dysfunction in the family and and saying that it's coming down to you now at this point. And, and dysfunction, we all have dysfunction. Oh my God, please. Everybody is completely dysfunctional. But that's what we're growing and learning from, right? So, so grandma is saying, will you get your ass ready? Because, and she's being tough. She's tough. She's a tough woman. Um, she's not so gentle or this like real sweet. I'm not getting any of that. She's giving me evidence in a personality style here. That's what they do. I'm an evidential medium to mm. let you know that they're here. But she wants you to know the direction you're going in, man, is is extremely powerful in the next, like I said, five years. Yes. A lot of power, yes. a lot of responsibility. A lot of responsibility. And like I said, you need to tour. Have you done any touring or thoughts of touring even now? Yeah, the thought, I mean, yeah, tours in the works right now. It's, um, it, it's, it, okay, yeah. so there is actually three contracts coming up for you oh, shit. Um, real soon. Um, and any one of them can be really positive, but one... One is involving reaching more at a younger age than at an older age. So, um, so think about that. Think about, and that's going to be more positive, more impacting. Um, but either, either of the three, okay, a new one is going to be coming in real soon mm. and offer. Either of the three would work out for you. Okay. So, so you don't have to fret about it. And don't just Am I going to be the money back in. on Google Preferred? Yeah, I was just going to ask that. Can Are you, you seeing tell? anything with Google Preferred by any chance? Like- Curse, are you seeing cursing with penises? Jeff's asking. Mm, no, I'm. Um, <laughs> I'm. I'm definitely seeing an increase in popularity, even though it, you've got you're so popular right now. What about an Google increase in preferred. income? Increase in yes. income? Anything? Well, that's going to happen in the tours. Oh, that's going to happen. Oh, okay. Great. Now, here's something you've not necessarily considered, but you might want a ghostwriter to help you with this: is to start writing a book getting some of your words out there. Okay. Um, you've got a lot of things to say and write about, and you've got your stories and you've got your end of the stories and all together there is going to be really popular, but you just keep needing to put yourself out there as much as possible, but change some of your attitude. It, it really like is- Like what? Like what? Yeah, I, I agree right well, off the bat. Well, no, I'm sorry. Well. I- with, with whatever you're about to say, I already fucking agree with I it. I know dude. you need Not you need to. to be going. You can move people. You're an inspiration. That's it. Okay. You have to think of inspiring, not shocking. Yes, will you get viewers? But I'm going to tell you right now, and this is what you're not going to like. And it's the reason why Robin Williams committed suicide. Everybody was in love with Robin Williams, right? And you would think, why would this man be so unhappy? Everybody loved him. No, everybody loved Robin Williams, the performer. Nobody knew Robin Williams, the person, and he knew that. And he never got a chance to experience all the love that he really deserved and that he felt. Don't get into that habit, because right now they love the shocking Logan Paul, but not the real Logan Paul. You need to develop compassion, which is the reason why that shit in the forest happened, okay? To teach you compassion, 
what you didn't have. You know, a lot of times you have to learn what you didn't have by the experiences you go through so that you can develop it, mm -hmm. right? And so compassion for you, but that's all from the heart and self-love. And without the self-love, man, I'm... Does it make sense to you what I'm talking about? Yeah, can it really you go does. down inside there and really admit that you can have fun and you can act like an asshole, an idiot, and do all the things you want to do and enjoy life that way? But when it comes down to deep, really assessing yourself that that self love is just not there, or that self belief, oh, you know how to do this. <clears throat> But do you know how to just be a person in spite of this? Do you know how to get a woman to love you, not just be with you because you're a personality and you have fun? I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. Seriously? Well, that's what you need to learn. It's what we all need to learn, just so that you need to know. Because I feel like the that. answer is yes, but I'm not just going to give it to myself. No, everybody says yes. My, my work is based on the fact that most people do not believe what they think they believe because mm -hmm. we have defense mechanisms that get in the way. Your initial set mm -hmm. of defense mechanisms are so strong, it's blocking you from feeling what you really feel about yourself. Oh, wow. And our first set of beliefs, the maladaptive set of beliefs, is what we learn about ourselves when we're growing up and with the messages we receive from the environment. I'm not seeing all the most positive messages that you receive from your environment growing up. So how can I break down my own walls, my defense mechanisms? Like That's great. Be willing to hear this, not just from a person from by me, but by you. You need to be willing to listen to yourself, to listen to little Logan Paul, because it's little Logan Paul. Um, at two years old... At two years old, what happened at home? That really disturbed you. You really absorbed. Um, right around the age of two, any stories that you know about you? What was happening in the household at the time that was negative, not positive? Probably just climbing stuff. No, you were climbing. You were out there. You were rambunctious. Wouldn't that be have been when uh, the Jake Paulers were created? Like, oh, right, right. Yeah. oh, shit. So, I mean, that's pretty shitty, right? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> my brother was born when I was two. Oh, you hated that. Oh, uh, I did? He still does. Oh, he still oh, does. Yeah, you hated that. You had jealousy. Jeal jealous? Oh, of course. What, why do you think, what do you think sibl sibling rivalry is? Jealousy. It's a, right. It's your rivaling for the affection and attention and love. Children translate attention into being lovable and not. And there's only two things you learn from your parents, whether you're lovable and how to love yourself. Now, one of the things you learned a lot was independence. Oh, uh, yeah. And how to stand up for yourself. But, and that life is hard and life is tough, which is one of the reasons why you also move towards the tough side of you is to try to fight that. Mm. Okay. Um, and yeah, you were definitely jealous of your brother. Wow. When he came in and it made such, it had such an effect on you. You were going to do everything even back then to stand out. Mm. And you did, that you did everything. And um, uh -huh. who was the male teacher in school who was the real idiot who didn't like you? Um, um, do you remember that? There was one, one teacher in, in particular who either just was trying to get you in line or a male. Um, let's go to high school. Oh, you had trouble. Who did you have trouble with like in high school? You actually told me about this. There and wasn't some te one teacher. There that was one. She was a female, though. She it was a female. But was she like really bossy, like a male, like male dominant type of yeah, woman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's why I'm picking up the male energy from BD, her. She had BDE. She had big, endless big, big dick, dick energy. energy. Oh, like endless, definitely. That's, endless. Okay, there you go. So you know that? Oh, yeah, didn't like you. But then there was also some things that were a couple yeah, she of- she hit me in the fire drill. Did she really? She was born oh on October God, 10th. Idiot. I'll never forget. I know she who you hit are. you in the fire. She hit drum. me. She hit me. And then one day, she she hid my saxophone from me. And I came in after class. I was like, hello, miss. I think I forgot my saxophone in the class. She's like, I haven't seen it. And then later, two days later, we found out that one of the office clerks was like, yeah, miss, delivered your saxophone to, to the office a couple of days. And we've just been holding it in. What here. do you think she was doing? Just outplaying it? Just, just no trying to make my mean, life difficult, dude. Mean, I was, mean, a, yeah. I was a fifth grader. Did she hacked a loogie mean. in the sax? Yeah, Ugh. she spit on my sax. Well, you were rambunctious and back then. And I mean, teachers don't know how to handle kids with big personalities. You had a big personality. Um, yeah, but you used to make fun of some of the girls too. I did? I did? God yes, you did. Wait, 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 wait. There was, there was, I'm getting an image of a heavy girl that you used to pick on. Nah, you're way off now. That, I was, I was never a bully. You're way off now. Never I gotta stop bully. here. Yeah. You gotta stop me on that one? I'll be honest with you. It you sounds right to laughed. me. laughed. It sounds right to yeah, you. Yeah, I've experienced this bullying side. Oh, but there you're will a be, fuck ass. We there will be a video. Oh, no, there will no, be a no, video no. about yeah, it. And, and you know why? Because I... There will be a video about it. You were no, I had on. Yes, I had no yeah. guy friends. I was the shortest dude, and so I only hung out with girls. Like, mm -hmm. that, those are my only... I was, I was the gay best friend. 
Were you really? Yeah. That's really funny. But yeah, but I'm seeing this one heavy girl that you weren't friends with. That might've been his brother, Jake. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Not the heavy girl. The person making fun of the heavy girl. <laughs> oh, <laughs> making yes. fun of the heavy yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah. Is, mm. That's the but Yo, pff, Vincent, it seems like such a cliche thing to go to. Come on. Like make fun of the heavy girl. Like I, where you, yeah. What that's you so can lame. Do that's cliche so, things. Yeah, but that's so too. lame. Like my dad, like that was one of the first things he taught me is like a person's appearance doesn't define them. Well, that was good. But you think you understood that at, as a kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you think I make fun of a fat girl, Vincent. <laughs> seems like he's, Stop trying to do it to me. Vincent, it seems like he's hiding something. It seems like he's hiding something, Vincent. No, that's just, all right. All right, we all we all did. Look, I was picked on my entire life, and I wound up picking on a kid You myself. know what? Maybe you made fun of the fat girl. Don't I, pin this shit on me. No. Vincent, that's I'm sorry. I got, I got to do this. There was a girl named Sandra. He told me about her in fifth grade. He used to call her Chubby Checkers every day. He told me the whole story yeah. like last year. Yeah, Remember, I did. he told us to. I did, yeah. yeah. What else did I tell you, Mike? She always no, you're quick. making that Fashion up now, Mike. <laughs> Yo, y'all can you're try it. You said you love Cheetos. You said you, you love Cheetos. Y'all can try as hard as you want. I was never a bully. I believe. I Put didn't it in say your you were a bully, bully, bully. I'm saying that one time back in the old days when you were younger, there may have been a chick, a girl that you made fun of. You didn't That's do anything. Like at lunch, you didn't. One time. Sure about one time. I had a, I, I, uh. Here it comes. <laughs> well, uh. Did you crop dust someone in no, the lunchroom? No, what did a, you do? You can't lie to a psychic, okay? Crop, I, I, there crop was a, dusting there was is a, a very real thing. All right, Logan. <laughs> there was one. And you cannot deny it. <laughs> There's a lunch lady the, the, who like patrols. She's like the chaperone of like the lunch, the cafeteria. Okay. And um, she was, she was a little heavy, short and stout type, type chick. She was oh. probably like, probably like. Uh, 45, 50, and she was just a bitch to us. If I'm being honest, she was just always right, so mean to us, okay. so mean. And so one day, like, sure, I put a pee in a straw and shot it at her. Like, I did that. Well, guess what? She's still pissed about it in the eighth dimension. <laughs> like, <Okay. laughs> she's pissed. She's bro. still alive. She's still All right, alive. come on. Her name's Miss Murphy. I'm Don't so sorry. Don't validate me. I knew there was something, but all right, okay. But with, that's normal. We we do shit like that, and all the lunch ladies work. Oh all I can God, think about is all, fucking hag. All I can think about is the lady done. sloppy Joe. Know, from really, Billy Madison, from Billy Why do you think they portray them that way in every single friggin' movie you see? You want right? some more sloppy Joes? The, the, the food <laughs> made it extra sloppy <laughs> for you. Did you hear about the lunch ladies who laundered money like millions of dollars? Lunch ladies are accused of stealing nearly half a million dollars from school lunch. Oh my God. Those, wow. Look at these girls. That's like, this is what I'm saying. Like, just imagine these walk, like, someone had to shoot peas at them. Yeah, they look, I, they look like lunch ladies. It. You see, those are unhappy people. Yeah. Four hundred seventy-eight thousand dollars. That's sisters. a lot of From lunch money. From New Canaan money, Public dude. Schools in Connecticut. That's a that's a very wealthy uh, school system. That's right down the street from where I grew up. Absolutely incredible. I respect the hustle, though. Just don't try, steal half a million dollars from your school. Yeah. Anyways, go, go all ahead. right. Relationship is important for you. That absolutely needs to be established. I'm talking about romance. <sighs> Fucking fuck Here ass. Here we go. This is the uh. moment the blogs have been. Take it away, blogs. <laughs> Here we go. Wait, what do you got for me, Vincent? Well, man, you've been attracting shit. I mean, oh! it's like uh, it's not oh, like Insta models. No, out. no, no, no. This is that. Yeah, that's the look thing. Is okay. We manifest and we attract. Like attracts like. The deep down course. Yeah. Go, okay. That's first of all. But, is that why there's so much shit in the house? Well, Are we attracting all the like actual dog, dog shit? shit? The dog oh, shit. Oh, you're in my attracting bathroom. dog shit. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, Mike did this I was morning. In my bathroom. A bunch of feces going yeah. on inside there. You know. <laughs> well, yeah. There's. A, well, think of all the shit that goes down here. A lot. Okay, there you go. And so sometimes why not it's soupy. It in here? Sometimes it's right, dogs just, in there. Listen, right, dog. But here's the thing: you're attracting. You attract based on what you believe about yourself. So literally, you are not attracting anything that's substantial because of your lack. Little Logan is in there, and maybe adult Logan says, "Oh yeah, I want somebody. I want somebody. You know, real good love, man. I can share with." But little Logan turns around and says, "Yeah, but you're unlovable. You're not good enough. You stink. You know." And yeah, it's, well, it's true. You don't deserve anything. It's not true. It's a lie that none of that is true that's just what the beliefs that you've what? wound up forming to start with so that energy goes out into the universe and then you wind up attracting somebody that it's going to end it's not going to work it's going to be sabotaged and you walk away unconsciously it's self-fulfilling prophecy turning around and saying see i was right I'm, I'm, I'm not worth anything but you may have your fun in your moments you may try to have your fun but you really are all about love dude you really are love and you've got to you've got to start getting into something substantial and 
real so that you know who like you are. Like a relationship? Yeah. Like, it's like, these guys are great Ugh. and you can have love of friends, you know, yeah. bromances, you know. That's Unfortunately, bromance. we just we just don't have the orifices that you're looking for. No. I mean, well, we, we have, have orifices. orifices but we do, but not, yeah. but just not. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully not. Hopefully you're not looking for They're not framed. I, but if you are, better, that's you know fine. I mean? That's fine. Right. That's but I hope you're not. Preferably not But if you are. That's it doesn't fine. make a just difference know. what you attract, just as long as it's real. No, but if you are, fuck. Just because it's 2019, and if you are, that's fine. <laughs> it's fine. But just for my personal, if you, all right. Wait, are you trying to say? You're no, I'm hoping? trying to cover our asses, quite literally. <laughs> fuck. Okay, you're trying, literally. All right, right. You're going, yeah. <laughs> fucking son of a fucking. <laughs> Look out. Walking on eggshells over here. Walking on balls. No, but I, I, Walking I, I, on balls. All right. So, what substantial relationship have you had so far? I know you're young, and that's okay. But what was substantial? And actually, you had. There's two romance or two two women that made an impact on your life that hurt you. Who? Who? You see, they hurt you way before you hurt them. Even though you might jump. Um, you may bail out before they get a chance to hurt you, but but that really makes a difference. Who were the two though that had the greatest impact? <laughs> Their names were <laughs> and oh, we're both gonna, great girls. We're, we're gonna censor that. <laughs> uh, oh, you gotta pull that out, right? Yeah, okay, redacted. Mm, hope they're not watching right now. Um, uh, uh, they'll get clipped. Hi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you see, and then you walk away acting as if it, it didn't really hurt when it really does hurt you. You get scarred. You get really scarred. Yeah. And, hurt. and your defense mechanisms kind of hide that and stuff like that. But that just goes to show you how sensitive and loving you really are. You need love and big love, unconditional love. I've been with my wife for 46 years. Wow. Married for 40. I know how to make it work. Yes. Thank you. Uh, that, was that was a week. That was a week clap. How about just this? Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> what the fuck is that? I'm sorry. <laughs> that's our soundboard. Yeah. I know, yeah, that's a sound. That's a wing. That's special. What the that's fuck a, is that? No, really. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> that that's great. okay. Um, that but yeah, you need deep relationship. <laughs> and I'm not talking about where you can go. I'm talking about the emotional end. You need the emotional end. Physical is no problem for you, and you can attract them any way you want physically. But you need a deep emotional relationship, but you've got to start healing yourself first. That's how you break down the walls. Mm. You admit your lack of self-love, have all the games and the fun you want, but the most important work you should be doing is that self-healing work and that self-love work and everything else in your life is going to expand. Wait, wait. Go ahead. Go ahead, you're getting deep. Um, wait, hold on. Everybody hold their breath. Let's get go. deep. Logan, get deep. Are you about ready to fart or have an important thought? <laughs> Might be both. Okay. <laughs> Look out! <laughs> I feel like I love myself like a lot. I know. But is it real though? Is I, it reflective in your outer world? No. What do you mean by that? Okay. Because because you brought up um what was a comedian? Sorry, I'm blanking right now. Robin Chris, Williams. Chris, Robin, Robin, Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Yes. And like a lot of comedians, um, Comedy is their defense mechanism, right? Yes. Uh, tears and, of a clown. And, and, yeah, tears of a clown. And I often ask myself, often I'm, I, I check myself. I'm like, is that me? Like, am I hiding some sort of uh, deep depression or sadness or unfulfillment I have inside me? And the answer is always no. Right. Like, That's your I, conscious answer. Okay. 95 to 98% of the human mind is in unconscious awareness. That means only two to 5% is conscious. So there is a whole bunch of shit going on in there that you don't even know is going so like, on. Are you saying there. I could snap one day? I could crack? No, you're not going to crack. You're not going to crack. You've got it together pretty well. Okay. That's how strong your defense mechanisms okay. are, but you're not in touch with that inner. Here's how I know that, and in, but besides being the psychic part, the result of your life proves what you really believe. We're manifestors. And so we're either manifesting what we want or what we don't want. What you see in front of you, what you have in your life or what you don't have in your life proves what you believe about yourself, okay? The most natural thing on the face of the earth is attraction and love, all right? We actually created the couples. We were not couples when we were first created, all right? We were androgynous beings, but we screwed up. We separated the sexes. That's the whole meaning of the, the first chapter of creation in the Bible is Adam and Eve were actually the sons of man, uh, sons of humans, us. 
And so we separated the sexes with the understanding that we have to come back together again. So it's the most natural thing to want to have a relationship. I did a, a, a podcast yesterday, actually a radio show, and we had a caller who absolutely insisted that she was fine being alone. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's great. You get to understand yourself. You appreciate yourself. You appreciate who you are. But it's bullshit that you want to be alone. It's total bullshit. We want to have a lover. We want to have somebody that's meaningful because the more intimate the relationship, the more you learn about yourself. If you loved yourself that much, the proof would be in a relationship coming into your life. Is there is there a chance that one of the two uh, relationships that scarred him could potentially come back around to be the one that- Absolutely not. No, really? It's completely somebody new. Wow. And it's completely somebody different than what you think you would be attracted to. And that's the most important thing. Maybe, like a, tw- maybe like when, a Twitch streamer or something like or that? Or a flight attendant. Uh, yeah, I heard you talking about a flight attendant before. Didn't you know they're flighty? I mean, then. Yeah, uh, holy <laughs> shit. You know, you know, Let's do a little, shot. Uh, that's what I was saying. Oh, they fly. Yeah. <laughs> they fly. All right, right. What, do you think the, what do you think the employment or like the position of the girl that he's going to fall in love will be? Like, do you have any kind of like idea of what it could be? Well, the- She's very, actually, there, there isn't, okay. Like, is it Camille? There is Cabello a side of chance? a woman that you, that you can appreciate, um, but it, t- it intimidates you. Smart women. What do you mean? I love that. I know, but it intimidates you if you get too deep into conversation with them, and they what show. What are you talking about, Vincent? <laughs> no. Where, where is this intelligent woman? If you love him so much, where is she? Wow. Wow. Exactly. She's in West Hollywood. Okay. If you really must know. So, look, what, what? She's in West Hollywood. Here's the point. You're growing, and the woman that you're going to be with is an intellectual Great. as well as an emotional. She's going to be really balanced that way. So she's in a business where she has to do a lot of thinking, a business. She's like a, a manager, a director, Botanist? a corporate person. A corporate no, person? not unless she's growing pot. No, no, definitely she, not. I know. Really. Is she no. in the entertainment no, industry? No, definitely not. No, you do not need somebody from the entertainment industry. What the fuck? No, because that'll like be I... somebody else messed up emotionally. You don't yeah, need that's that. A fact. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. That's a god dang fact. <laughs> right. You need somebody stable. She's stable. She's secure about herself. Now, are you seeing now, anything? Maybe like Oracle. Like someone from like Oracle or like a big software company, nine to five. I I would think more software than anything else. Okay. Really? Um, I yeah, need to yeah, be yeah, a yeah, bad yeah. bitch. Definitely. Is she gonna definitely. be smart? She um, gonna you know, I, I I did. Besides talking about relationship, I wanted to talk about your logo. Okay. Oh, and why? Oh, you the Maverick logo. The uh, Maverick logo and the colors. So, what did you have to do with creating the colors of this? Me personally, yeah, well, I'm colorblind. I don't, I don't know. That's the of your bird. Oh yeah, so well, oh. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with the the bird you've had from childhood. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, oh, I got it. I got it. I think this is the whole problems with like intellectuality parties. No, I know. See, that's what I mean. It's just like, I got it. Those are the things that make him feel ignorant. Okay, <laughs> believe it or not, whether he shows it or not, that's the stuff that makes. Well, him you want to know something? You know this, but he knows the answer, and he just plays dumb. A lot of the time. Hold on. He's a smart fucking No, I really kid, blanked dude. there, dude. Oh, all right. I've well, been, fair enough. He didn't sleep much. He was out okay. drinking. Yeah. No, I I didn't having, you have yeah. to agree with this logo? Did I what? Agree with it. Yes. Okay. And agree with the colors of it. We yeah, yes. I love the colors. I love you the colors. You have absolutely no idea what the colors mean. That is so meaningful. Okay. Okay. Just so that you know, first of all, an, an eagle is an extremely spiritual bird. It has insight and vision way beyond any other animal and creature. It can see a mouse on the ground from a mile in the sky, yeah. okay? Um, so that that is representative right there. Then the colors of it- Can I just, I'm sorry. Wings. When, just re, sorry to cut yeah. you off. Uh, when you say an eagle, like, and then how would that apply to just like a parrot? No, just, oh. An e- uh, oh, an eaglet. Or a peagle. <laughs> what, what, what's no, good, no. Jeff? It's a fucking parrot. Hold on a second, but the logo is not a parrot. What the is logo it? No. is a hyper realistic badass bird of prey. There you go. There you go. <laughs> not just a parrot. Does no, it look like a parrot? Actually, too? it's not a bird of prey. You think it is? It's not. That represents oh, so much more. One. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, is it, well, it kicks oh, ass. Sure. What are you saying? So I'm sorry, kill. man. No, is this, this bird? represents Get it represents who you are. It's about righteousness. It's about mm. flying and soaring above everything else. It's about um, if you're, you've got the wings in green, which is your fourth spiritual center, which is your heart chakra. It's your heart is what's going to make you fly above 
everything above all the lowly stuff on earth. But here's the interesting thing. Blue is a very spiritual color. Now you start getting into the higher aspects of who you are, but you only have the tips blue rather than the entire thing. So you need to touch upon that more, but you have the body in the lowest colors, the orange, the red, the, the yellow here, even though it's bright and sunny. This represents the lower human side. And sometimes you fall too much on the lower human side of you rather than what's really making Making you soar, the love, the spiritual aspect of really uh, new, new, new blue drop coming uh, wow. to Maverick. Uh, okay, by Logan Paul, loganpaul.com slash shop. And Kong, Crazy. red drop still available, Man. but I mean it is a little on the lower. Kong human was side. amazing for you <laughs> as well as your your other dogs. I mean, uh, you just need that. And Kong was such this. Just think of you. You're this big guy, and you love fighting, and you love being tough. You have this tiny little adorable. I know. Pomeranian. It was so what weird. do you th No, it wasn't weird. That's exactly who you are and who you are personality wise. Just you're the gentle just puppy. Just a little bit. Sweet, a little fluff. No, that's oh, what you're sorry, sorry, I, I know, died. really. A little bit. They can that. act that way, can't they? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But he wasn't a little bit. He can act. Yeah, yeah, they all act up. But but the the smaller the animal that you can love, the bigger the heart that you have. That's actually uh. representative of who you are. Um, and 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 literally, again, the universe actually is helping you and you are part of the universe. You needed to experience compassion. You needed to experience heartbreak to know, not female leaving you, but to really feel an, un, a loss of unconditional love. Sometimes you have to lose something in order to know what you already, already had. And that's your life right now. But wanting you to know that right now, even me being here is you asked for it. Um, Archangel Michael says you do a lot of mental talking to everybody and everything. And it's nonstop. And he hears your complaints um, about yourself. And so you say you have this unconditional love, but obviously there's stuff that's going on in there that they hear, that they know, and they want you to know that you're bigger than. Obviously, there's a big plan for you. Do you know that? Do you feel that? Yeah. And you feel you you always felt different than everybody else and you loved that. You loved standing out and it made you different as a kid, but you were very talented, creative, but you wanted to be different and radical. Yeah. Yes. And you're radical now. Yes. All right. So don't you want to change and save the world? Yes, Vincent. I know you do, man. I do. I know. Man, this is cool. Hey man, wow, can we talk deeper now? <laughs> Wait, even yeah, shit. how much deeper does it go, dude? I feel like we're at the bottom of a so, well. Well, so right, for right? The, well, that's, that's where we go, good, dude. We're going in the eighth dimension. For the people that don't believe there's anything after this life, like oh man, because that's you not so many people that. believe YOLO, you only live once. So what do you have to say to the, the to that? Belief? What do you have to say to Drake? They'll find out. <laughs> Wow. They'll find out. Here's the thing. There is so much evidence out there that there is a continuity and a continuation of life. And it's not just from mediums. It's from your own experience. It's it's when you, you, you lose a loved one and then all of a sudden you're feeling that loved one's there. It's not just a memory and, and, and all these synchronicities happen. Plus, more importantly, scientifically, energy cannot be destroyed. All right, so if you don't want to believe that we're these beings that think and feel in the afterlife, then you still have to know that we're an energy and that energy will remain. And what makes us think that just because we have a body, we can think, we can feel, we can see, doesn't, isn't that, do you know that today science has determined that the human mind isn't even part of the brain? What? They cannot find where the mind is located. You cannot measure the mind. You can only measure the electrical impulses that are being sent to your physical brain. They even believe that the heart has a mind of its own and they measured that. They measured that there's a satellite that orbits the earth that the United States put up and it measures all the positive energy flowing around the earth. There was one day in the history of that satellite being up there that spiked the positive energy higher than any other day that that satellite was up there. Valentine's, Valentine's day. day. No. Ten minutes after the first plane crashed into the Twin Towers and everybody started praying. It was the 
power of the heart, they started to realize that the energy coming from the heart alone is the same as the Earth's energy. And there is now organizations and scientists studying that. HeartMath, heartmath.com, incredible, go there. I'm actually speaking with the developer of that in September um, where it's showing scientifically. It's why you can walk into a room and feel another person. You're actually feeling with that their person, vibes. their vibe wow. through your heart. So we're energy. So with all of that going on, what makes us think that we just wind up being dust again and nothing else. That's crazy. Do you, is there a, uh, cause I've sometimes when I walk in a room and I see someone, I feel something with like my penis heart. Do, is that a thing? Like a, a mind, does your penis have a mind? No, it's, it's just own? that, um, God made two heads, but not enough blood to work both at the same time. Ah. You just got to get the blood more up to the top head, Mike, instead yeah, of the bottom okay. head. Okay. Yeah. I'm working on that. That'll help. I know. I know. And I'm, and, and not with you, just your hands alone. I mean, you just <laughs> <laughs> got him. Vince. <laughs> hey, that was funny, man. Oh, thanks. I get some credit for you. <laughs> Besides you. Yeah, huh? That was good. No, you guys are great. You really are. And um, and and definitely keep talking. You need to keep talking. You need to constantly be heard. Hell yeah. The audience you, says that. You, you sometimes fall into shadows. And I'm not just talking about here. I'm just talking about in general in life for you. Um, I'm feeling a lot of that in your past, like... In even in your childhood, not being listened to is what I'm feeling is like an issue. And so there's that part of you, which not giving into that, which is really cool because you wouldn't be involved in this if you were giving into that. And it's very important for you to be heard and to be seen and to be known. It's just that you do it in a different way. You don't have mm -hmm. to be, you know, a complete asshole. And I'm not saying that you guys are complete no, asshole. No, you can. You're partially Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it, you act that way. You're not that way. Right. So to remember when I'm saying that, I want your listeners to, they're going to be jotting in, oh man, what a freak that guy was calling them assholes and bitches. Um, no, no, they completely agree. But at the same time, oh, they, good, they good, also okay. know that, I am you know, the I've... sampling of the general public. No, I'm not. I'm freaking old. Um, <laughs> so, so you need to be seen. You need to be heard. And you've always got the right thing to say. Don't be afraid to say it. Honor your voice. And don't let anybody stop you and suppress that voice, even if they don't like hearing it. Why are you taking okay? photos of me, bro? <laughs> Watching you absorb information is funny. Really? You, oh, wait, is that funny? Yeah. No, 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 not the message. I think the absorption. Can you relate to that? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely, course. definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and relate to that. Now, Mike. Oh, oh God. <laughs> yes. Do you know you have a child somewhere? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What's Running this? around somewhere, man. I no, know. No, you're lying. Okay. There's no fucking way, <laughs> dude. My pullout game is incredible, dude. Oh, your pullout game? <laughs> when Yo, you, you think you guys can't swim? Yo, don't fuck my day up like this. No. <laughs> Vinny, don't do this to me, dude. Okay. All right. You're right. You're right. We got Drake man. on set. Do we get another Drake in the building? <sighs> No, well, yeah, well, no, seriously, okay. you need to become more serious when it comes to relationships too. You really do deserve something very powerful. And and is something going up and down right now? Is there somebody that you've been interested in that you're kind of avoiding or, <laughs> or back and forth kind of thing? I'm a, I'm a numbers guy. It's a scale thing with me. I, I, I can't put my finger on anything, dude. I have no- Because there's a bunch? There's a lot, dude. Yeah, it's more, it's more of a- you're putting notches in your gun belt as a means of thinking you're a great lover, mm. you know? Yeah. But what you're missing, you're missing somebody reflecting who you really are. I mean, obviously, you're very outspoken. You've got a big fucking mouth. I mean, but in a good way, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. All right. You like to be heard too, right? Above everybody. Let me ask you something. Above. This all seems super optimistic and like, it's great. Like we hope Mike gets it, falls in love, but also like- <laughs> Is it going to happen? Is there a chance that he's just destined to be alone forever? Like, like realistically? No, no, honestly. Okay. We were told that when you live in the world, not of the world, some wise man said that 2019 years ago, okay? Live in the world, not of the world. What did he mean by that? When you decide to incarnate down on earth, they're playing a game and you're deciding you're going to play that game. 
Now, you don't have to play like everybody else and step all over each other and cheat just to win. It's actually not about winning. It's about playing the game. And what that means is you incarnated here and part of this game is marriage and monogamy. It's the only way to get to really experience the depth of who we are. And if you leave not experiencing that and not experiencing it in a positive way, you're going to kick yourself in your soul's ass. And yeah. you're going to, you're hard on yourself. You're hard on yourself now because I know you walk home. And here's the thing about all of you, unfulfillment. Unfulfillment is more of what you're experiencing now than fulfillment. And you guys deserve fulfillment. So yes, does it sound positive that you all can do that? Of course, that's why we're here. That's who we are. I'm always going to end it positive, but I've been giving you some shit beforehand to let you know the things that have been getting in the way, right? I got a lot of shit getting in the way. Yeah, but, you but that, but You have less shit getting in the way than you think. You just think you're tougher than you really are. You really are. You, you're, you're a gentle soul. You're a loving soul. You're a great soul. And you'll stand up for anybody. And you would take a bullet. And you certainly would take a bullet for him or for him. Would That's you, who would you, you are. Would you? It, I just don't want to die. Can I get it in nope. the leg or something? You die. Would you take a bullet for me? Uh Come on, why don't you just say it? I, I don't I don't like to talk. I'm not an armchair quarterback. Like when it when it happens, it happens. Like maybe I fucking would, dude. Maybe I fucking would. Now buy me a car like David Dobrik. What's good? Sea Geek was fucking good. <laughs> like I can, I only have so much money. Can we get a sponsor, please? Yeah. Wait, hold on. I oh, gotta yeah, ask this. I gotta ask this one last question. The, the kid. Yeah, that's a joke, yeah? <laughs> oh. I'm going to leave that with you to be thinking about. <sighs> because you need to know that some of your actions can be really irresponsible because not only are you hurting yourself and depriving yourself of unconditional love, you're depriving of them too because they think they want that. But no woman just wants to be used. What do you think the entire movement is today about being respected? And why do you think they wound up achieving that disrespect? Because somebody still had to say yes to a guy who just wants to bed them, right? And mm. you don't coerce them. They agree. And that's not good for either one of you. And you are deeper than that. You really are, man. You are a good guy, no matter what you'd say. You're a good guy, no matter what anybody says about I th you. I and think Mike's a great lover. Mike's going to have like a, just a dime piece wife. I I'm getting the vibes. Like just so, like a spiritual woman. There you go. Like I feel it. He's like I'm just going to fall. I, I, I think that's the only thing. Like that he's going to be 50, I 60, just like completely different dude. Like I feel like that's the only thing pass. that can happen at this point because like, I think what the only thing that can, because I don't really like catch like little feelings. I think the only thing that can happen is I just fall fucking head over fucking heels. Like I'm going to meet one girl. I'm just going to go just down the stairs. You will. You will meet somebody from a past life that you remember and the love will be instantaneously there. Estimate on, on delivery of said. Yes. You got a time frame on that? Or any, any kind a of A time estimate? frame? Yeah. Within two years, you'll be engaged or close to a woman to be engaged. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Anton. and it won't Anton be right. because Anton. it won't be because you made her pregnant either. It'll be for a legitimate reason. Wow. Okay, and don't you be laughing. You're going to be with somebody really soon too. Oh, by the way, you're, you're taking a trip to Hawaii or some exotic island, um, but they're not coming with you. And there's, I think there's some female involved with that. Yes, me. A trip. Yes, yes. You need you you need exotic. Oh, I've been need, saying that. You we keep ending beach, up in San Antonio. You need the water. <laughs> you need something really super cool like that. And um, you're very romantic when you want to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, bro. You know I mean? Because right? of that emotional. Don't be ever be afraid of your emotions, man. They're not going to hurt you. They're going to really just stand out. Yeah, I'm just concerned not to like go, go off like a super big tangent. I'm just I'm so focused on my career right now. It's sometimes hard for me to dedicate so I much time to it. I understand that. Let yeah. me tell you how you focus. Having been a psychotherapist, because that's one of the things I went to school for, all right, besides being a singer, actor, and dancer, you know I was in the movie Grease. What? what? Yes, you didn't know that? What part? Wait, you, what friggin' producer do you have that doesn't do research on me? Damn. Uh, he's, out, he's out today. Uh, he's he didn't out. come in. Uh, yeah, uh, producer didn't come today. I was a singer, actor, and dancer in the movie Grease with John Travolta, Olivia Newton John. Best one of the best movies all bad. time. I wasn't one of the. Right, exactly. I was so one of the, the good, main. That's people, where the good hair comes in. But I was in there. Right? By the way, speaking of finding a girl to lock what? down. Was this you in Grease? That wasn't me in Greece. 
but no, that was my, that's my friends from England. Oh. I can't believe you got those that, but there are pictures there. If you go to my Facebook page, Damn. there's actually a picture with me and John Travolta. Wait, what was your role? Um, I was one of the dancers. I was one of the, not one of the main dancers, oh. right? But it, uh, it actually was my biggest claim to fame. And because of that, that helped me get the powers and the abilities that I have today. It turned my tormentors into my dearest were friends. Were you like a gr uh, grease lightning, go grease lightning, or were you the um, summer loving? No, or those were, I was the alternate. The way I got into that movie yeah. is I was called to be one of the alternate main dancers. There were 10 males, 10 females that were in everything. They called me up and said, um, you're going to be an alternate one. And meanwhile, I was in New York. And uh, if somebody doesn't make it here or something happens to them, we'll call you up. You come back and you replace them. I couldn't stand that shit. So I called Patricia Birch, a choreographer, back the same day. And I said, listen, if I come out to L.A., will you let me on the set? And that way, if you need me, I'll be there already. I'll sit in the background. She's like, we can't pay you. We can't do anything like that. I said, no, I don't need pay. I'll do it on my own. And she said, fine. So I was there. I was on the set during the start of rehearsal. It was four weeks of rehearsal. It turned out that Lorenzo Lamas, who played the jock, didn't show up. He couldn't show up for the first three weeks. So they turned around. They look at me sitting there and they go, you want to stand in for him, but we still can't pay you. I said, okay. Three weeks, I worked my ass off standing in for Lorenzo Lamas for all the dance scenes, especially the, the one in the gym. Alan Carr, the producer, came up to me one day and he says, I need to talk with you. I thought he was going to kick me off the set then. You know, that was it. Everybody was laughing at me too, except Olivia Newton-John. She was a doll. And Alan said, um, you know what? Well, I heard what you've been doing and you're really loyal. So I want to gift you. I want to put you in the movie. So he put me in the movie. He signed me a contract as a featured dancer so I could get royalties. I've been getting royalties for Holy 40 shit. friggin' years. Wow. Holy shit. Okay, yeah. on Holy that shit. damn movie. It is shown four times a month all over the world. It's one okay? of the best movies. And by the way, it, for listeners it's, or watchers, it's a great way to lock down a girl. Every girl wants to watch Grease. If oh, you bring a girl do. to your house, you say, hey, you want to eat some popcorn and watch Grease? They're going to go crazy. Unfortunately, they're trying to do a, a prequel during the beach scene. They're going to expand on that. Hopefully it doesn't happen. They're doing a oh. oh, please don't fuck up. If so, Greece. you got to get a, a dancing. Oh, my back. God, no. Oh, forget it. I do hand jive now. you got to give me mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, you yeah, you yeah. should get you. royalties off the prequel, too. Oh, we get all, all, all royalties. And it renegotiates all the time. After a certain amount of years, they renegotiate contract. Damn. So, yes, I even forgot what I was talking about before I met. Uh, I, just you and Greece. I have a question yeah. about, like, could each of us become psychics? Absolutely. You're psychic already. You don't know it. In other words, you actually wouldn't exist if you weren't intuitive. Okay. Our, our natural ability is to be intuitive. All I did was, well, it happened to me. The channel opened up even more so, but you've got that channel. I teach it. I teach it through telecourses. I teach it in person. Everybody can learn to do exactly what I'm doing. You do it already, but you talk yourself out of it. You get intuitive messages all the time guiding you. That's the first thing that comes to you is an intuitive message. Your intellect is there to label your intuitive message. By the way, did they tell you that I, I not only talk with animals, I also communicate with aliens? Really? You're lying. And I'm not talking about illegal ones? Ashtar. Alex Jones type shit? I'm, yeah, I'm what talking, are we talking about, about. I love aliens. What type, what type really? of what really? aliens? Want, I love aliens. They are communicating with me. Do you know that there are brothers and sisters that are just more advanced than us on their in their different universes? We all were created at the same time and went to different places. Wait, different different universe? Yes, different un Oh, this is only one universe. Yeah, but multiverse theory? Yes, right here on Impulsive. What is multiverse? Here we go. <laughs> oh, God, we yeah. are really getting deep here. I wonder if all the 12 year olds will understand this. No, our, <laughs> our demo is older on Impulsive. Yeah, I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing up the uh, shout out to the 26 to 32 demo. What's good? Yes, you can bring it up. And they're here to help. A matter of fact, we are not related to the Neanderthals. Okay. The Neanderthals were part of the physical world that evolved. But 11,000 years ago, about, there are scientists that are showing now our DNA strands. They found a baby, a baby Neanderthal frozen in ice in 2006. And it was so intact, they were able to examine its DNA. Well, the DNA from a Neanderthal is completely different than the DNA from modern man. And what they're showing is that a part of the DNA was actually spliced to now make modern man, which we instantaneously appeared here. We did not evolve here or grow here. 11,000 years ago, boom, there's modern man <laughs> and everybody. All right. What? Who did that? 
The aliens did that. What? Our brothers and sisters spliced our DNA to hasten and and create our yeah. evolving quicker. That's and like the reason a why a lot of the Egyptians, right? Yeah. That's what oh, they, that's they what passed they, down they, that absolutely. information. Absolutely, they passed the down Samaritans. the information to them. We accepted that back then. They're coming yeah. now because we're screwing up our human body so bad with diseases and everything. They're actually trying to help us. Do they have cures? Like to, and, that, exactly. Really? They're they're re they're they're re um, engineering our because I have this itch, DNA dude, to help that. I have this itch on my can, balls. It won't. <laughs> It won't go away, dude. Yeah, I know. I think that itch is from something else, Mike. Oh, shit. <laughs> and it's just like you need to start sitting on clean toilet seats, okay? And Vincent. be with some clean women. Ah, that's that's tricky in LA. Listen, Vincent, I got some I got some really important questions for you. Go ahead. Go. All buddy. right, I'm gonna I'm gonna rapid fire really quick. Rapid fire. Will James Charles and Tati reunite and, and fix their relationship? No. How much longer will Jana last? Jake Paul and, and Tana Mongoose. End of this year. Wow. Who will reach 20 million subscribers first? Logan Paul, Jake Paul, and Mr. Beast. Oh, Logan <laughs> Paul. Wow. This, that's the underdog right now. And most importantly, I got to ask this one. Will FaZe release the fucking contract? <laughs> oh, I don't even know what that's about. I didn't know what any of it is about, but I'll, I will say yes. Uh, that's the first thing that's coming to my mind is yes. <laughs> Release the fucking contract, please. <laughs> Release the fucking contract. Hey, but I've heard you say, I've heard, you said anyone could be a psychic, but I've heard yes. you say before that you have a gift from God, so what's good? I didn't say that. Wait, I, it was like a Google headline. A gift from God? Why would yeah, you say, why would that's you what it was. Right. A, no, it's no, it's I'm not a gift Google from, from, everybody is a gift from God. and Not you, you're, you have a gift from God, and that gift is your psychic Ability. Oh, all yeah, right. If yeah. you're talking about that way, yeah, well, we all have that. And my gifts, I definitely consider them um, a blessing. Um, Look, it that says came right here. Psychic Vincent Jonas says his abilities are a gift from God. Oh, wow. You really picked that up. Did you see the new ABC story? Yeah, ABC 11. They just put me, that was, that's new. They just did that, that show, uh, that uh, video on me. Look at you, man. Oh, a couple hurts. of weeks ago, they Look did that. Hot. was a special about, they wanted to interview me. They they found me and I That's feel, fun. I feel very, you know, black. I love that you're wearing the blue. I'm a blue person, right? There's my office is blue. I got blue shirts. I mean, damn. What are, what are a couple tips for us to start <laughs> damn. getting in touch with our spiritual side? Yeah. How to get in touch with your spiritual yeah. side? It's like a okay. phone I could use. There's, first of all, there's plenty of books. You want to, you want to put yourself in places, and in here in California, you've got some of the greatest places to go to. Find a spiritual center, number one, a new thought spiritual center, science of mind or unity. You've got one of the greatest, I'd be at it all the time with Michael Beckwith at Agape. Agape. Okay, yeah. Agape is amazing. Actually, my minister was um, ordained by him. I know him very well. Um, besides that, read. You. T it's all about that. You want to talk about, that's what we were talking about, is you need to be able to focus on the right core. Mm. People compartmentalize themselves. This is the psychological part of what I had learned. We think we have our friendship compartment, our family compartment, our career compartment, and we exert energy in those compartments individually. And we run out of energy and we wind up with excuses like, I don't have time for a relationship because I've got this going on. That's because you're working at it the wrong way. If you work on your core, the spiritual aspect of who you are, believing in yourself, knowing what is your, what is your relationship with the world here and each other, why are you here? You start working on that stuff and expanding your belief systems. What you're doing is your energy is now being applied to all those compartments and you're making the compartments work without direct focus on them. They will, you manifest that. I work, I have been working on myself since I was 28 years old. My wife and I are together that long because the moment we got on this spiritual journey, we were working on healing our past. I was the tormented one and the bullied one. That's why I know it so well. Mm. I was chased every day, beat up when they caught me, shoved in lockers, head flushed in toilets, peed on, spit on, Whoa. even ejaculated on in the boys' gym. Okay. Whoa! Shit. Absolutely. I, and then I was sexually molested by a babysitter and the parish priest. Okay. So I had all of that oh going God. against me. Right. But, but 
I knew that I had to heal that. And so my wife had her things between her mother and father divorcing, right? So we worked on ourselves, but we did it together. And so we would read a book, discuss it. We'd go to a movie, discuss it. We'd, we'd go to a spiritual center and friggin' discuss it. And while we were doing that, we were changing ourselves. We were opening up those feelings that you're denying and hiding. Okay, you get your first set of maladaptive beliefs when you're a child. They, I call them the I'm not. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not deserving enough. I'm not lovable enough. Each one of us have that. What you see screwed up in the world today is you use that as a barometer. That's how many I'm not these people have when they lash out on somebody else. And then as an adult, you spend your entire life wind up developing a new set of beliefs to shield you and hide and protect you from the first set. But that first set is influencing you the most. So you want to get in there. You want to learn about who you are so that you can heal that shit. And as you're healing that shit, you're manifesting, you're drawing to you. You want you want new contracts? You want to get out there? Man, work on your core. Work on what I'm freaking telling you about. I am telling you I am not full of shit. I know people can say that. I don't care about the psychic and medium part of me. I care about the message part of me. Mm. Learn who you really are, tap into your power, and you will manifest everything. And know your purpose. You've already got a sign, all of you, as to what your purpose is. You think that this is just happening by chance or you just happen to come up with a cool formula. No, that's not the reason why this is happening. It's because of the purpose you created and you're already onto something. Mm. You're meant to change and and inspire people. Keep going, and that's why your numbers are gonna get higher. Do you, do you see, uh, what, would, what would the words Logan Paul uncut mean to you? Do you see any value there? In like a behind the scenes, more about who he really is? Oh, definitely. Because people want to know who he is, and he can't be afraid to show. You cannot be afraid to show your real side. Something to think about. This is one aspect of who you are, but you know how you'll get people. And this is what you think people are relating to. This is where you think you've got them attached to you and cool. But there is another group of people that want to become part of you, and that's the people that will attach to who you really are. Don't be afraid to show that side. They'll love you, man. You've got to trust that. You've got to trust that. That if you bear your soul to everybody out there, that's what they love today. Yeah, they love the, the, the shit stories. Yeah, they love the abuse. Yeah, they love the Kardashians because it's all bull crap and they walk away laughing at them, not with them. Mm. Have them side with you, relate to you, be inspired by you, turn around and say, hey, I can do that too. I can be like him. That's how you make an impact and that's what they're longing for out there and that's who you can be. And I'm, I, nobody paid me to come on the show to do that. I want everybody to know that right now. That's right, hey, we don't pay our guests. We don't pay shit. Yeah. So pay if you're shit. a big celebrity- you know how much it costs me to get here? Damn. So if you're a big celebrity and you're no. watching this, just know we ain't fucking paying you. Shit. I don't even fuck get paid. I don't even have any money. <laughs> That's, I don't think that's at all true. Well, that's what fucking T said. The girl at Hi, My Name is T said it. Yo, she was sitting hey, right why there. why are you so heated, no, bro? Because no, because fuck no. that, dude. No. Because he has a kid running around. That's what <laughs> ah, I understand. With Hi, My Name is T. All right, yo, I want, I want to close out there. Uh, Vince, you're a G, dude. Thank you. Oh, man. I really appreciate it. You really guys appreciate are cool. your advice. You're you awesome, bro. So awesome yourselves. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, me. of course. It's fun, man. Where, where can they find you on social media? Okay. You can go to any of my sites. I'm Vincent Jenna MSW is my page or my personal page is just Vincent Jenna or vincentjenna.com with G-E-N-N-A, right? Okay. And you find me there. Listen to my, I have a radio show, Unity Radio, right. Unity Online Radio. And so you, if you go to my site, you'll see all the different events I'm doing all over the country and keep your fingers crossed so that I get my own TV show real soon. Hey, hey gonna, let's go. Hey, you're, you're gonna, I feel let's that. Let's go. I'm serious. But I told you you were psychic. Hey, we got something planned for the audio only. Uh, so stick around for the Spotify and iTunes version of the show. Um, yeah, thank you guys. I'm going to rewatch this. I'm going to go read and try to love myself. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you for listening to Paul. This is the number one podcast in the world. Take it easy, fam. Yeah. Peace. Y'all buying it? Y'all, y'all. Yo, first off, I got to address this. Do, do you have a child? Is, is that, that, is that true? I, I don't think so. Was it? I, don't, I don't think so. But I mean, honestly, like, fuck, dude. It's like, possible, bro.